I literally just saw this. Like, I came, I went to the theater and watched it, came home, and sat down to do this review. And I. <sighs> Hey everybody, Lindsay here, and this is my review for Don't Breathe 2. I, I, I don't know what this was. <laughs> I saw the first one when it came out. It was, it was fun. It's very creepy. It's very gross. <laughs> it's uh, got a lot of suspense. Uh, this one does as well. It has a lot of very intense sequences throughout. It starts and then does not stop until the end. There's a little bit of downtime, but maybe just a minute or two and that's it. Otherwise, this thing is balls to the wall. Go, go, go. They don't waste any time. My issue that <laughs> I'm struggling with is in this movie, I <laughs> I don't know exactly what the filmmakers want the audience to feel about Stephen Lang's character, the old man. I mean, in the movie, I don't know. I don't know. They, they kind of turn him into a hero, but he's not. He knows he's not. Other people in the movie know he's not, but I don't know exactly how the filmmakers want the audience to feel about him as a character. That that he paid his dues or whatever for the atrocities that he did previously. And I don't know if if that's if that's successful. <laughs> they don't exactly make him out to be the hero, even though he does kind of heroic things, I guess, but I, I mean in the movie he knows he's not a hero, the other people know he's not a hero, but what are we th as the audience to feel? Because we saw him do some pretty fucked up shit in the first one, and he does some more fucked up shit in this one, not as bad as, as the stuff in the first movie, but it's still pretty fucked up, dude. I mean, I... I... Are we supposed to feel sympathy or empathy towards him? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's if you like super fucked up movies, that's probably right up your alley. It's it's all oh, it's just <laughs> it really makes you question your morality and where your lines are drawn. I guess I I because <laughs> I mean. This movie makes you root for for that character. That murderer and rapist and kidnapper. Y this movie makes you root for him and I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal to me. It's just trying to reconcile my real life morality with the fake reality that exists within this film. It's puzzling. But overall, what this movie makes you do is, is, is root for the lesser of two evils. And, and this is how it stacks up as to the two evils and how they show which one is more evil. <laughs> Because you've got Stephen Lang's character over here, and he is, he is a rapist, he's a murderer, he is a kidnapper, but he won't kill a dog. Okay, they, they go to great lengths to show that he will not kill a dog. And then you've got the, the other bad guy, the, the main bad guy over here. He is a murderer. He is a kidnapper, um, child mur attempted child murder uh, with this guy, but he will kill a dog. He doesn't give a fuck about a dog. He'll kill a dog. 
So that's where we draw the line <laughs> with morality in this movie, is who will kill a dog and who won't kill a dog. And that's supposed to help us uh, make up our minds. I don't know. I <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing um, with uh, killing the kid, that's a huge moral line uh, for most people, I think. I would hope. Jesus. But... <laughs> It was just kind of funny to me that, that you know, a, a big thing to make us uh, root for this guy and not for this guy is that this guy won't kill a dog, but this guy will. I just thought that was humorous. <laughs> so I, if you weren't a huge fan of the first one or you didn't see the first one, don't pay attention to this movie at all. If you did see the first one and you liked it quite a bit, check it out and make up your own mind. I... I don't know what to think about it. I, I, <laughs> it's not a movie that I think will have a lasting impression upon me. It'll definitely make me think about it for the next few days, just questioning how, why, what the, the motivations were to try to make us not necessarily empathize with this character but root for him in this situation. <laughs> this movie's a tough one. And like I said, if, if you like the first one, check this one out. It's not as shocking as the first one. It's a lot more of the same stuff. You know, him creeping around and doing his little, his little blind tactics to attack and kill people. It just, they throw in this extra monkey wrench of this child um, that he's obtained, which I won't, somehow, which I won't get into, and the motivations of the person that took her from him. So, this one's a tough one. I don't know if this movie needed to be made, or people were clamoring for a sequel to the first one, or this kind of sequel to the first one. So, I don't know. If... If, if you've seen it or you go see it, I'd love to know what, what your thoughts are. Please put them below in the comments. Because I don't know what to make of this one. It's... It feels kind of gross to me. <laughs> gross and sleazy. And I, I don't know if this movie... I don't know if the first one needed a sequel. And I don't know if we needed to humanize this character. But it's super fucked up. So if you like that shit, go see it. <laughs> that's going to do it for this little quick review. I just wanted to put my thoughts out there about this movie and and because I, I wondered what other people thought of it that have seen it or that are going to go see it. So so let me know. Let me know. I'll be interested to, to hear about that. But that's going to do it for this review. So until next time, this is Lindsay signing off. I'll check you later.